Hello and welcome. My name is Thomas Little. I'm a SQL Server DBA. I've been a SQL Server DBA for about 10 years now. And today we're going to talk about partitioning tables and indexes in SQL Server 2008 R2. And the same concepts can apply to SQL Server 2012. You know, when a database table grows in size to hundreds of gigs, uh, it can become difficult to load new data remove old data, or even maintain the indexes on a table. You know, just the size of the table causes those operations to take much longer. And even the data that must be loaded or removed can be sizable, making insert and delete operations on a table impractical. SQL Server 2008 provides table partitioning to make this much, manage much more manageable. You know, partitioning a large table basically divides the table and its indexes into smaller partitions so that maintenance operations can be applied on a partition by partition basis rather than the entire table. And the SQL Server Optimizer can direct properly filtered queries to appropriate partitions rather than the entire table. And what we're going to demonstrate for you today is actually how to partition a table in the AdventureWorks database. The first step in doing that is determining how you're going to partition the table. What we're going to partition is the actual transaction history table within the AdventureWorks database and we're going to partition it by year. So here you see this query I ran tells me the number of rows based upon year in the transaction history table. And we're going to do this because we're going to use these numbers to verify our, part, uh, our row counts in our partitions later on in this demonstration. Now the, now the other step or the next step that you have to perform is actually creating the file groups and files in which those rows will be mapped to. And you do that by altering the database. So we're going to go ahead and create file groups for 2007 and for 2008. So I'm going to create a file group called Transaction History 2007 and we're going to create another one called 2008. The next operation that we're going to perform is actually creating the uh, data files and we're going to map those to the file groups that we just created. So 2007 and we're going to create our NDF files or name our NDF files and we're also going to do it for 2008. Sorry, We are going to map the 2008 file to the 2008 file group and we will create the NDF file for 2008. Okay, so you'll see here that the file group, the logical name, um, is mapped to the appropriate file group here. So 2007 is mapped 2007, 2008 is mapped 2008. We're going to click OK. Now the next step is to actually partition the table. And what's great about Management Studio 2008 is that it provides a wizard in order for you to do that. In 2005, you had to kind of do everything through T-SQL. The wizard kind of helps out a lot. So we are going to go to our transaction history table. Here it is. We're going to right click on it, go to storage, and create partition. Now in the partition wizard, uh, the first screen that we're going to uh, be presented with is selecting which column we're going to choose for our partition. And again, we're doing it by year, so we're going to do transaction date. Okay, we're going to click next next screen we're presented with is naming the actual partition function. And what the partition function does is it maps the rows of the table or index in the partition based upon values of the specified column or the column we're going to specify in the next couple of screens. For right now we are just going to name our partition function transaction history.
Now our next screen is to name the actual schema. And what the schema does is it maps the partitions of the partition table to the file groups. And we are going to name that. Oops. Let's give it a naming convention. Next. Here is where we're actually going to map the partitions to the file, file groups based upon our date ranges. So we're going to choose the file group 2007 and we are going to choose our range and what we want is 2007. Now what's key here is date and time. <clears throat> you can't just include the date because then your date counts become off. You want to make sure you include the actual time. Uh, so we're going to do that 59, 59 998. Now the reason why I do 998 is because 999 would actually be 2008. So we want to choose 2000 or uh, 998 in that value there. So we're going to do the next file group for 2008. And there we go. Now the, the other option or the other great feature about the wizard that has this button called estimated storage and you can click on this button and it'll actually give you row counts, required space, and available space. And you can use that to manage your database size. But we're going to use it just as a, um, as a verify, to verify our row counts for each one of these file groups. So right now we have 42,844 for 2007. And we have 70,599 for 2008. We're going to go back to our query here and verify 42,844 70,599 so those actually map, match up. The next thing you want to do in this screen is you need to map a, another file group in which all other data will fall into. If you don't do that you get this error. If I click next you'll see this particular error. And basically what this means is you need to choose a file group in which all other data will fall into. And we're going to choose the primary file group here. Okay. Once you do that, you click Next. And then you go ahead and run your script. Now this is going to run and this is actually going to partition the, uh, partition the data into the different file groups and files that we set up in the previous steps. This operation can take a while. It all depends on how large your table is. Okay, So this finished up and we're going to go ahead and hit close. And now you have partitioned your table. But how do you verify that? How do you know that the actual rows are in the different file groups? So what I have here is a query that will tell me what, uh, what actual partitions or how many rows are in each partition. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and you're going to see here for our file group 2007 42,844 and for our file group 2008 70,599 and that should match our two values in our previous query. You can see here you can get the lower range and the higher range and our row counts match and yep, on the transaction history table. And you can see the primary file group which has no rows so there are no rows. So if I enter for example data in there from 2009, well it doesn't fall within these lower and upper boundary ranges so it will actually go into the primary until you create another file group, another file, and then alter the schema. And in another video we'll talk about how to alter the schema to include data from other years. And we'll use the same example. So stay tuned. My name is Thomas Little. Uh, you, if you have any questions you can always reach me at my email address at tlittle30 at gmail.com. That's t L-I-D-D-L-E, the number 30, at gmail.com. Thank you.